the sun hung low in the sky, casting elongated shadows across the bustling flea market. I wandered through the maze of stalls, my journalist's eye always searching for the unusual, the forgotten stories hidden in plain sight. It was a hobby of mine, collecting relics of the past, each with its own untold story. Today, amidst the clutter of antiques and trinkets, my gaze landed on a pile of old newspapers, yellowed with age and frayed at the edges. As I sifted through them, one particular paper caught my attention. It was dated 30 years back, a relic from a time long gone. The headline screamed about a local scandal, typical of small-town gossip, but it was not the headline that held my gaze. It was a small box in the corner, a missing poster. My heart skipped a beat as I stared at the photo in the box. It was me. Not just a resemblance, but my face, unmistakably. The name beneath read Samuel, a name foreign to me. Panic and curiosity swirled within me. How could my photo be on a 30-year-old newspaper? Who was Samuel? Questions raced through my mind, each more unsettling than the last. I purchased the newspaper, my hands trembling slightly, and hurried back home, my mind a whirlwind of theories and conjectures. As I sat at my desk, the paper spread out before me, I knew one thing for certain. I needed to unravel this mystery. This wasn't just another forgotten story. It was personal, a challenge to my very identity. I decided to start at the local library, hoping the archives would shed light on this enigmatic Samuel and his connection to me. Little did I know, this was just the beginning of a journey that would lead me into the heart of darkness, into secrets best left buried. The library was a haven of tranquility, a stark contrast to the turmoil in my mind. As I delved into the archives, hours slipped away unnoticed. The librarian, an elderly woman with a sharp gaze, observed my fervent search with a mix of curiosity and concern. When I finally found a file on missing persons from three decades ago, my hands shook as I opened it. There it was, a report on Samuel, with the same photo from the newspaper. Samuel, a local freelance journalist like me, had disappeared without a trace. No body, no farewell note, nothing. The case was cold, forgotten by the town, but now burning anew in my mind. Leaving the library, I felt the weight of countless eyes on me. Paranoia, perhaps, but I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. As night fell, my phone rang, the caller ID showing only an unlisted number. A chill ran down my spine as I answered, only to be met with silence, followed by an abrupt end to the call. Sleep eluded me that night, my dreams a chaotic replay of my discovery, interspersed with fleeting shadows and whispered voices. The following days were marked by a growing sense of unease. I caught glimpses of figures trailing me, always just out of sight. I told myself it was stress, the burden of the mystery taking its toll, but deep down, I knew something wasn't right. My investigation led me to interview elderly residents, hoping their memories might illuminate Samuel's story. Their accounts painted a picture eerily similar to my own life. Samuel, like me, was an inquisitive soul, always chasing stories, delving into the town's secrets. The turning point came one evening when I returned home. My door was ajar, the lock tampered with. Inside, my papers were scattered, the old newspaper conspicuously missing. The intrusion was a violation, a message that I was getting too close to a truth someone wanted buried. But instead of deterring me, it fueled my resolve. If someone was trying this hard to scare me off, then I was definitely onto something. My search took a new direction when I discovered an entry in the town's records about Samuel's last known investigation. It was a diary, cryptic and disjointed, filled with references to local legends, and a forbidden area deep in the woods. The diary was like a map, leading me towards the heart of the mystery, towards answers I wasn't sure I wanted to find. But there was no turning back now. I was too deep in, and the shadows of the past were closing in around me. The diary became my guide, its pages a labyrinth of thoughts, theories, and fears, all penned by Samuel. It was unsettling how much I resonated with his words, as if they were fragments of my own mind. He wrote extensively about a forbidden area in the woods, a place shunned by locals, wrapped in superstitious fear. Samuel believed this place held the key to a series of unexplained phenomena in the town. My days were consumed by research, piecing together Samuel's notes with historical records. Nights were a different story. They brought relentless nightmares, always ending with me standing at the edge of the woods, an oppressive darkness beckoning me in. The boundary between my life and Samuel's was blurring, reality mingling with echoes of the past. The sense of being followed intensified. I caught glimpses of shadowy figures, always just out of sight, disappearing when I tried to confront them. Calls to my phone continued, silent reminders that I was being watched. My home no longer felt like a sanctuary, but a stage where unseen eyes observed my every move. Driven by a mixture of fear and determination, I decided to confront the mystery head on. I packed my bag with essentials and set off for the woods. The forest was dense, the canopy above casting deep shadows that seemed to move with a life of their own. Every step I took was heavy, laden with the weight of uncertainty. As I ventured deeper, the forest seemed to change. The air grew colder, the silence more profound. Time lost meaning, and I wondered if I was walking in circles. 
Just as I was about to turn back, I stumbled upon it in an abandoned cabin, hidden away, as if the forest itself was trying to keep it a secret. The cabin was old, the wood rotting, yet it stood defiantly against the ravages of time. Inside, the air was thick with the smell of decay. Symbols I didn't recognize were etched into the walls, and photographs littered the floor. Among them were pictures of Samuel, his face frozen in time. But what froze my blood were the other photos ones of me, taken without my knowledge, some recent, others impossibly old. As I tried to process the impossible, the cabin seemed to come alive. A low hum filled the air, growing louder, more insistent. The walls vibrated with a sinister energy, and the photographs began to flutter as if caught in a breeze that didn't exist. Then, from the shadows, it emerged an entity, formless yet overwhelming, a darkness that seemed to consume the light around it. The entity spoke, its voice a cacophony of whispers, revealing a tale of an ancient curse, a town's forgotten sins, and a cycle of souls trapped in perpetual torment. Samuel was part of this cycle, and so was I. We were echoes of each other, bound to the town's fate. The revelation was shattering, a truth too horrific to bear. In a moment of pure terror and clarity, I realized I had to escape. The entity, a guardian of the curse, sought to bind me to the cabin, to the cycle. I ran, the cabin shaking violently, as if trying to keep me within its malevolent grasp. I burst out into the woods, the entity's screams echoing in my ears, a sound that would haunt me for the rest of my life. Gasping for breath, I stumbled through the underbrush, the darkness of the woods pressing in around me. The cabin had become a hellish beacon in the night, its windows glowing with an otherworldly light. I didn't dare look back, fearing that the entity, that living shadow, might be reaching out for me with its dark tendrils. By some miracle, I found my way out of the woods, emerging into the cold, early morning light. The town, once familiar, now felt alien, its streets a maze constructed around a secret heart of darkness. I wanted to scream, to warn the people, but I knew they wouldn't believe me. The town lived in blissful ignorance, or perhaps willful denial, of the horror that lurked in its shadows. Returning home, I found my sanctuary desecrated. The remnants of my investigation were scattered, the diary and my notes missing, likely consumed by the fire that had raised the cabin. I was left with nothing but my memories, a dangerous truth with no proof. In the days that followed, I tried to piece together the fragments of my shattered reality. The entity's revelations echoed in my mind a cycle of souls, an ancient curse, a town entwined with darkness. My connection to Samuel, the missing journalist, was clear now. We were not just similar, we were reflections, bound across time by the town's sinister legacy. I attempted to share my story, to find someone who would listen, but the words died in my throat. Who would believe such a tale? The townspeople turned away, uncomfortable or disbelieving. The shadows seemed to laugh at my efforts, a silent mockery of my futile attempts to expose the truth. The realization hit me hard I was alone in this. The entity, the curse, the cycle, it was all mine to bear. I couldn't stay in that town, not with the knowledge of what lay beneath its placid surface. With a heavy heart, I packed my belongings, the newspaper with my photo labeled missing, the only tangible proof of my encounter with the impossible. As I drove away from the town, I watched it disappear in my rearview mirror, a part of me yearning for the normalcy I once knew. But that normalcy was an illusion, shattered by the truth of what I had uncovered. The open road ahead was my only solace, a path away from the nightmare I had lived. But the nightmare, I knew, would never truly leave me. It was a part of me now, a dark whisper in the back of my mind, a shadow in the corner of my eye. The farther I drove, the more the oppressive weight of the town's secret loosened its grip on me. Yet, a profound sense of loss and disquiet lingered, like the echo of a nightmare in the waking world. I tried to assimilate back into a normal life, but normalcy had become a foreign concept to me. My experience had irrevocably changed me, the line between myself and Samuel had blurred, leaving me questioning my own identity. Nights were the hardest. I would lie awake, staring at the ceiling, the darkness of my room a canvas for my fears. The entity's whispers would return, a haunting litany of truths and revelations that I could not escape. I wondered about the cycle, about who or what would be next. The curse was a living thing, a shadow that stretched far beyond the confines of that small town. I tried to write, to document my experiences, but words seemed inadequate to describe the depth of the horror I had encountered. The story was too fantastic, too unbelievable. Who would accept a tale of ancient curses and cycles of souls, of an entity guarding a town's dark heart? One day, as I was trying to piece together a semblance of normal life, I received a package. No return address, just an old battered envelope. Inside was another newspaper clipping, yellowed with age. My hands trembled as I unfolded it. It was another missing poster, but not mine this time. It was a different person, another face I didn't recognize. Yet, there was something familiar in those eyes, a hint of a shared fate. The realization was chilling. The cycle continued, the entity's grip reaching beyond the town, beyond time. I was a part of something much larger, much darker than I had ever imagined. The story wasn't over, it was just a chapter in an endless saga of shadows and whispers. I set the clipping aside, a silent testament to the journey I had undertaken, and the mysteries that still lay hidden. 
The open-ended nature of my experience was a source of constant paranoia. The entity, the curse, the cycle they were still out there, somewhere, weaving their dark tapestry. As I sat there, lost in thought, I couldn't shake the feeling that this was just a beginning. The unknown awaited, a dark path that I was destined to walk. The truth was out there, hidden in the shadows, and I knew, deep down, that my search for answers was far from over. The story of myself, Samuel, and the town's curse was a threat in a much larger, much more terrifying tapestry. And I was inexorably tied to it, a player in a game whose rules I was only beginning to understand.